Hi everyone, it's the Better Half series and again today I have my better half with me. Bola is here and it's always good to be with you on set. Thank you. Hello everybody. <laughs> All right. Um, we're discussing relationship stressors or marriage stressors. Notwithstanding where you are in your relationship journey, the more you start to get closer to your partner, uh, especially when you start to do things together, things that will involve you, even in the dating state of relationship, you have to spend money. You go out, you know, to the cinema, you go to restaurant and all that. Uh, sometimes people say, look, even at this stage, it's not one person that should be doing, you know, everything. Money then starts to matter, you know. Many people have said, you know, marry for love, don't marry for money, you know, all kinds of generic statements. And those statements look good when people make them. Marry for love, don't marry for money, you know, and all that. Yeah, so did you marry me for love or money? <laughs> we didn't have money. <laughs> so that was no question. <laughs> Let's keep that for another day, all right? Maybe I shouldn't have asked the question, but I asked anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, but we're discussing money can be a major stressor in a relationship. Finance can be a major stressor. We're going to discuss many stressors in this series, but let's start with money as a stressor. So, uh, babe, what, 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 what would you say about that, uh, the importance of money? Yeah. I think we'd be fooling ourselves if we said finance or money isn't important. Hmm. That deception already will put stress on your marriage because um, we have needs. It's basic we have needs mm -hmm. um the need for shelter for food everything um that we will need to sustain um you know a comfortable life will require some resources from us and unless we first of all recognize that money answers all things um that already puts us in a space where we're not even dealing with each other with realistic um expectations so we, let's establish money is important our relationship with money is, however, more important, I find. Because even when you deal with um, celebrity couples, for example, for whom you'd expect, finance shouldn't even be yeah, an issue. Yeah. You'll find sometimes that the root of their disagreements can come back to this same matter. So while it's important that we establish that it's important for us to respect um, our need for resources, mm. that is not as important as our relationship to money, both individually and as a collective. What is our relationship to money? Yeah, so what you're saying is that whether you are affluent or not, whether you're rich or not, money will still matter. Yes. You know, in certain relationships, people think that money is not important because money is not our problem. We have money. It's how to spend it. It's how to spend it. But our relationship with money is very important. Yeah, if I see money as like my God, and somebody see money as their servant, we will clash. The ideologies? Yes, we will clash because I feel my life depends on money. Yeah, while somebody feels money is just a tool, it's a servant, it's my messenger, I just, I need to get something. Uh, if I have enough money, I get it, you know. While somebody feels that, no, money is so important, I can't touch it. I have to always keep it. You know, that takes us to, you know, looking at money from people's, money language you know some people are spenders while some people are savers uh, some people are very futuristic about money while some people are very current day about money you yes, know current people, time some yeah. people have a huge risk appetite when yeah. it comes to money well others i just i just i just very cautious you know whatever i have i just have to hold on to it really tight yeah and unless we recognize that these are languages that we speak dialects if yeah. you would that we speak and begin to recognize that this is what this person, you know, who is close to me speaks and, and, and you know, devise a method to interpret the dialect they're speaking, harmonize it with yours, um, that, that just puts stress on your relationship. Yeah, because when, you know, it's important to note this, that when our money language or dialect, as the case may be, is different, it will create conflict. Absolutely. So, you want to take risk with money i feel you shouldn't take risks with money money should be managed like a baby don't take risk with it you know i don't want the money to collapse and die <laughs> and you think look 
this money, we need to spend it so that we can or invest it so we can get more. That's a potential conflict zone there. And when somebody is a spender, another one is a saver. The saver needs to be able to explain to the spender why we need to save. Yeah, why tomorrow is important. The spender is also saying, look, live today. I want to live and enjoy my life today. The saver needs to be able to say, live today, but don't live for today. Yeah, if we live for today, we'll jeopardize tomorrow. But we shouldn't live, we should not uh, not live today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a better way to say it. Yeah. We should still live today. So if I recognize that we should live today and you are a spender, we're in our own relationship, you are not a spender. But assuming that you are the spender and I, I am the one that wants to save money, and I, I, but I recognize that we should live today, that means I will lean to you in certain decisions. Then you also will now have to lean to me in certain decisions. Lean to me. Let, let me see how you lean to me. Uh -huh. You lean to me in certain decisions when it comes to, oh, we also need to take care of the future from today. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, inability to harmonize that view can be a major stressor in a relationship, especially when we're speaking different money dialects. And, yeah. you know, when you, when you break it down to the practicality, you know, you, you sit down to speak with couples very often and you'll find that both of them have very valid points very valid points. One person is saying that, look, we want to be able to build or buy a house in X number of years. And in order to do that, we must cut out all excesses. And the other person is feeling like, you know, they've been straight jacketed because of this, you know, regimen we're on. No one is wrong, essentially, you know, but it's important, it's vital that we understand um, that we're speaking different money languages at this material point in time, and unless we find middle ground, and um, this conflict has the potential to throw us into irreconcilable differences. Um, a different way money can be a stressor is when we come to the point of my money or our money. Your money is our money. <laughs> my money is my money. You we're see, familiar with yeah, that. Yeah, we're familiar yes. with that. And uh, it's always like that, yes. in, especially in marriage relationship. In many, relationships. many marriage relationships yeah. where women feel that the man's money is our money mm -hmm. and the woman's money is her money. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what, what do you say very narrow, from your constituency? Very narrow to, <laughs> to say that because the bulk of the relationships I know of are such that um, um, perhaps, for example, the man may take care of one or two big ticket items and ignore a lot of the smaller items the woman is stretching and covering so many other things but because it doesn't sound like house rent or school fees it's easy sometimes for the man to ignore but if you were to aggregate the spendings on both sides it really is considerable you know so m more often than not i find that in relationships um one person is is only limited to their own myopic view and the other person is struggling to help them see that look this thing is bigger than 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 what you see so um, it, it, it does occur sometimes that um, maybe one person is refusing to contribute at all to the relationship. But it's also important to understand that very often we're seen from different vantage um, views as well, I think. Well, you can say that <laughs> because you're speaking for your constituency. These things always emanate most of the time mm -hmm. from women, mm -hmm. from the traditional point of view that man is the breadwinner. So that means if you are the breadwinner, you bring the bread, it's our bread. Mm -hmm. If I bring the bread, it's my bread. Mm -hmm. And my knife is my knife. Mm -hmm. How I cut it is how I cut it. <laughs> you understand? So you're not, you're not supposed to get in the mix. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of men that I've had to you know, interrogate and, and speak to, mm -hmm. they, they always feel like it reduces the sense of togetherness in a relationship when a woman feels that our money is our money and my money is our money. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be one. Mm -hmm. Oneness should connote that what belongs to me belongs to you and what belongs to you belongs to me. Mm -hmm. So at so at no point should we get yeah. to that point where There's your a, money is your money, but my money wall. is our money. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important uh, that we run our relationship in such a way that we can get to that pathway of the ideal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the ideal 
in a relationship, in a marriage relationship, is oneness. Even in business relationship, mm -hmm. two people can only work together when if there's a agree. point of agreement. And that agreement must say, when we make business money together, mm -hmm. this is the sharing formula. Mm -hmm. But what we make is for, is for both of us or three of us, as the case may be. Yeah. But in a marriage relationship, we are building the future together. You know, business partnership is different. Somebody can decide in the future to say, I, I want to sell my shares and I'm moving on. And, you know, thank you for all the money we've made together. But now, or I want to take some of my own money and invest in something else. Mm -hmm. But in a relationship, in a marital relationship, yeah, it's, different. it's different. We are building a future together. Mm -hmm. The ideal is that as we look into our future, we are seeing the same vision, mm -hmm. not two visions. That is division, division, two visions. Every marriage, every family should have, you know, a vision. Your vision is my vision. My vision is your vision. Money is provision. That's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Money is provision, that which is meant for the vision. So when money comes into our relationship, we are using it to resource our vision. If I bought into your vision, then it shouldn't be a problem for my money to resource your vision. If you bought into my vision as well, it shouldn't be a problem for your money to resource my vision. And by implication, there's no vision without life. So if you cannot resource my life and I resource your life, money is useless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, both resourcing me and resourcing my vision, resourcing you and resourcing your vision is what money is meant for. Money is called provision. Provision. Yes. So that sense of oneness has to come in if money will not be a stressor in our relationship to the point that I'll be able to say, my money is our money, your money All is our, our money. money is our money. Yeah. yeah. And it's also important, uh, especially from a traditional African belief system where, uh, you know, people just believe that the breadwinner can only be the man. I also want you to share a perspective uh, and what I mean is this, God can bless a marriage through either party. Yeah. Your conduit will be your salary or your business, mm -hmm. uh, uh, money you make from your business. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, mm -hmm. if I see it as our family mm -hmm. thing, and you see mine as our family thing, whether it's business or career and all that, and as a conduit through which God can bless us, then, both of us, it should be easy to say, this came to me for us. Yeah. Yeah. W w I think it's important um, to build a sense of um, team, you know, and that sense of this is our team. We are, we are, we are fighting together. We're pulling together. We're winning together. We're scoring together. I think it's fundamental. Um, but then speaking as a woman, and because I know that a lot of these um, sentiments come from a place of trust, number one. They come from a place of um, fair and equitable treatment. Mm. And this is what I mean. So in a relationship where um, um, the woman is bringing the bulk of the financial equity into the relationship, um, you would expect that her partner should be able to bring something. If you're not able to be as financially buoyant or vibrant in the relationship, she'd expect at least that there should be some fair treatment, some fair engagement, you know, um, some kindness, you know, in the mix. And that's support. Some support and care. And care. Yeah. You know, it's like um, you want to kill the cow that, I mean, the chicken that laid the golden egg, yeah. you know. You know, but where that is not there, it's 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 more of a of a challenge. Am I saying that that's an excuse for a woman not valuing her relationship or valuing her marriage? Absolutely not. But I'm saying that there are terms of engagement and terms of reference that make it easy. So you're saying that are intangible assets yes. that a person who has a lower earning capacity can still bring on the table. And because from our traditional um, his, you know, the, the history we're coming from, it, 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 uh, it was historically expected that the woman would keep house, that the woman would cook all the meals, the woman would do all of these other softer issues, you know. The expectation from historical um, you know, antecedents is that the man would supply the financial resources and the woman would supply everything else that came to build a home. Now we realize that it takes more than one winner to win the bread, 
we all have to chip in yeah. and push together. But why is so it the that other for many support homes, stuff yes, thing that also has to be the shared? The other side exactly has not evolved through the years. Yeah. We need to be kinder to each other. We need to support each other. If we expect our spouse to bring everything and put it on the table when it comes to finances, why can we then not also put other things on the table like childcare, like parenting, like you know, taking care of the home? Yeah, I'm just advocating, you know, for you know, let's engage properly. Yeah, let if we want to so, see, so you're saying equitable distribution and when it comes fairness. to uh, uh, and fairness when it comes to. Uh, how we make money. We e everybody should make home. make money yes. and then we'll manage the home together. Absolutely. If we are both charged with the responsibility of making money, mm -hmm. we should also be charged with the responsibility of managing the softer issues in yes. the home. Yes. Since, but well, we still have homes where even today it's one income household and the one income is fat enough to take care of everybody. Mm -hmm. And such guys also still expect that their wives will be the only one taking care of all the other softer issues of parenting, of homekeeping and all that. I, I still, even as a man, will say, even when you are the overall breadwinner, you still have to support. I know where the tension is. I know you want to say something, but where the tension is, is for a, a man, a man feels the more money or golden egg I'm able to lay, the less of me you get as my family or my spouse but there has to be a balance to it mm -hmm. sometimes you may refuse to lay some golden hair mm -hmm. to make yourself available so that the marriage itself the foundation of it will not you know be destroyed yeah, yeah. yeah. i just say I, I just come back to it depends on the quality of relationship you want to have yeah the quality of engagement you want to see i mean i was reading someone's story i don't remember where now forgive me i can't reference it properly but they were asking this i think 70 year old man you know what his primary regret has been in life and his only regret was that he didn't spend the time with he didn't spend time to build a relationship with his children he was in his 70s now none of his children could take the time they were doing well he paid their school fees he did all of that but they're in far flung regions of the earth, but they could not take the time to come and see him. I think he was in the hospital for something. No one would leave where they were. And he could tell, he could actually articulate it well enough to say that we didn't have a relationship. I was too busy providing. So while it is important to provide, we are after all talking about the importance of finance. It is critical. It is critical that we do not lose the more important issues of life, which is relationship which is family values yeah which is, building. which is the foundation of everything yes. yeah so uh, as we wrap this up um if we agree on oneness and that provision comes into a home it can come through either party or both party mm -hmm. but it's for us mm -hmm. then we should wrap up talking about full disclosure mm -hmm. and accountability mm -hmm. yeah i mean the ideal scenario is full disclosure that's where we should all be aiming for full disclosure such that I'm not hiding myself away. I mean, the scriptural context for us is naked and not ashamed. We should be able to, I should be able to say exactly where my husband is at and he should be able to say it likewise for me. Hmm. Um, but I do get feedback every now and again from people who say that, you know what, pastors, you're, you're describing an ideal situation. I, or you know, or they may be dealing with a spouse who really has a challenge when it comes to financial matters, you know, and sometimes it's useful to speak specifically and directly to scenarios like that. Yeah, so it's important. Uh, the ideal thing is full disclosure and accountability because without that, you cannot achieve oneness, naked and not ashamed, which is a, a scriptural context for a marriage, a, a Christian marriage that we thrive. It has to be naked and not ashamed. And that will speak to full disclosure in issues of finance, financial nakedness, if we we'll put it straight, uh, and accountability uh, to the point that some people, you know, make their spouse know exactly how much they earn, there's how they manage it, they agree on how to manage it. You know, there's one thing about earning money and being able to put it on the table, literally speaking, and say, how are we going to manage it? Do I earn it? Some people just feel, I earn it. I earn the right to manage it the way I want. I just give you your own piece. Mm -hmm. Go away. 
leave me on how to manage the rest. Uh, that's a starting point, but it should not be our end point. We should move as we learn to be, you know, uh, more, uh, how do I put it now, more uh, um, connected and conscientious with our approach to money. Uh, we should then grow from there to the point where it's literally as if we're laying down our life. Because when you put your money down that you, you worked for, it's as if you're laying down your life. You know, so to be able to lay down our life literally and say, look, this is the, all the money. Full disclosure. And I want to be accountable. Yeah. The moment there's no full disclosure financially and lack of accountability in a marriage, the stress that it brings, it can even breed lack of trust. Or maybe mismanagement from one side, yeah. or irresponsibility from one side. Yeah. The, 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 so the when, when, when the irresponsibility and mismanagement, you know, uh, comes into the mix, it hinders that full disclosure. We agree. And that's the point where a couple should perhaps seek for help. Yeah, go for counseling. Uh, talk to a mentor, somebody that can straighten both of you out. So we know exactly what we're dealing with. If we're dealing with financial rascality or a bad habit, somebody is on a substance that is costing a lot of money or a lifestyle that is unsustainable that will jeopardize the finances of your family. Let's be able to say this is exactly what we're dealing with so that we can then say this is how we're going to solve the problem. A lot of the time, people just go into their own shell stop being financially accountable or full disclosure because they notice something. They won't address it, they just start keeping their money. And before you know it, the marriage starts to fragment right in the middle. And that will not end well. Mm -hmm. It's better for us to be able to say, this is what we're dealing with. This is where we are. And this is our pathway, and this is our to, pathway resolve. to resolve. So confrontation, albeit with humility, is very important mm -hmm. to be able to say, I notice financial re recklessness here. Yeah. And we need to address it. Mm -hmm. So rather than playing the ostrich or just go back into lack of disclosure, mm -hmm. it's important that such issues. So when we attempt to resolve them on our own and we're not making a headway, then we know we need a third party help or assistance. I hope um, uh, you've learned one or two things from today's discussion in this series. Uh, I also believe that the wiser we live, the better we become. Yeah and we can always gain wisdom on any area. What we put on the table today may not suffice for everything you are dealing with as far as money is concerned in your home. But it's a starting point to be able to, you know, uh, uh, steer your mind towards recovery. But what is acceptable, what is ideal, is full disclosure, full accountability, naked and not ashamed financially, and uh, gaining, you know, wisdom to deal with any kind of financial recklessness or lack of trust that can make money a stressor rather than being a blessing to your home. Uh, final word. Final word. Um, sometimes the very same things that are meant to bless you can become a source of pain. Um, if you don't have a right relationship with money, even regardless of how big or small it is in your family, in your home, it can end up being the very thing that tries to, dis to destroy you. So make money your servant. Don't make it your Lord. Um, have a good relationship with money and engage properly. I hope this has been um, a blessing to you. We'll be back on the Better Half series. We're discussing marriage stressors and we just discussed finance today. Uh, until we come your way on the next episode, keep gaining wisdom to manage your finances in your home better. May your relationship and marriage be sweet. <laughs>